We reviewed a lot of stuff this year, way too much actually. So in this video, we are going to talk through the best tech of 2024, not just phones and tablets, but also their chipsets as well. We are also going to talk about earbuds and why not include laptops and those chips as well. Our cutoff date is from December 2023 to sometime before the Snapdragon 8 Elite devices are hitting the stores. So let's get started with the list. Do remember to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends as this list is only made possible thanks to your support. We will have links to all of our review for all of the devices that we are shining a spotlight on down in the description below. So check them out after watching this video. So we'll start off with the phones. And if I counted them correctly, then this is actually way less than last year. And I'm actually glad because we have more quality over quantity. But I also realize that mid-range market seems to be shrinking as well and entry-level smartphones will now cost somewhere about 1,200 ringgit and the premium phones in the market will be starting from around 3,000 ringgit all the way to about 6,000 ringgit Malaysia starting price by the way. And yet most of the devices that we reviewed this year were actually great. If I just look at the list of phones that we reviewed this year, then I'd have to give the phone that is in my pocket award to the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It is just a great phone and it does what I need a phone to do and One UI is still my preferred choice of software. I am someone who uses a lot of Samsung's feature and I also carry a secondary phone with me most of the time and that award will go to the Galaxy S24 Plus. I honestly think that this phone looks better and also feels much better in my hands compared to the S24 Ultra. Samsung also upgraded the screen to 1440p and the bezels are now super slim. Purely from an aesthetic standpoint, the S24 Plus is just much nicer. My unit here is also powered by the Exynos 2400 chipset and that is really not an issue for me. The real problem though is the cameras and we have documented an entire long-term review in another video so watch that at the top right corner there or down in the description below. And I also have a third phone on my desk as well and this is the phone that I pick up to do a few specific tasks or tests because it's just very powerful in its own right. And that will be this one, the ROG Phone 8. Why I want to highlight this phone in particular is because it is the best gaming phone of the year 2024. Look, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is a toasty chip if we are pushing it to its limits. The only one phone that can tame the 8 Gen 3 is this, the ROG Phone 8 and technically the 8 Pro as well. Thanks to the brilliant engineering on how this chip is placed in the middle part of the phone and have heat sinks, vapor chambers and whatnot, the ROG Phone 8 is just amazing. Plus, it also has an audio jack too. If we don't have the ROG Phone 8 with us, then we cannot fully test the Bowers & Wilkins PI8 fully and show you those audio latency charts. To anyone who says that gaming with Bluetooth earbuds are fine, just stop smoking copium. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna say to you. There are a few more fantastic phones that I want to highlight. The Galaxy A55 is a great phone and the Exynos 1480 is actually quite good for a mid-ranger. The price of the phone is quite high but then again there are many ways to not pay full retail price for Samsung devices. As an alternative, the Vivo V40 is also a great all-rounder phone. I genuinely had a good time using the Vivo V40 but the software experience isn't particularly the best so there are some trade-offs here and there. Then we also have the Google Pixel 9. Ah yes, after 9 long years, the Pixel lineup is finally available for sale here in Malaysia. We got to try out the Pixel 9 and it is actually an amazing device. They have a lot of AI features that I personally find it to be very useful. But the Tensor G4 remains controversial because quote unquote, it doesn't score high enough in benchmarks. That's sarcasm if you didn't catch it. I honestly don't care about benchmarks and it performed well in games for me, so no problems from my side. And that doesn't seem to be the problem for many people too. The Pixel 9 got the quote unquote, highest ever quarterly sales for a Pixel device and people really voted with their wallets. 
And a few more lightning rounds, the iQ Z9 is a great phone for the price and it also has great specs as well. It is a phone that is focused on performance, so some sacrifices had to be made. And this phone just doesn't have OIS for its main camera, so that is the one big drawback for this phone. One of the biggest surprises of the year though is the Xiaomi 14T Pro. It is the first phone that we have tried that is equipped with the MediaTek Dimensity 9300 Plus chip and this chip is just superb. It ran everything extremely well and I'm just surprised by how good it is. And it is also the best phone for mobile gaming at that price range. Actually, the gaming performance of the Xiaomi 14T Pro is just better than every other phone, even those that are running on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, except for the ROG Phone 8. Yeah, it is just that good. We are also not going to talk about Flip and Fold this year because we only tested the Galaxy Z Fold 6 and the Z Flip 6 and they were both very incremental upgrades compared to the previous generations. Plus, Oppo seems to have given up on their foldables as well, so... Uh. As for tablets though, we have tested 3 of them this year and I want to highlight 2 of them. First is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S10 Plus. This tablet is an incremental upgrade from the previous generation, but those upgrades make a huge difference. It is equipped with an anti-reflective screen and it is also the first ever Samsung flagship device to be using a MediaTek chip. The performance is absolutely fantastic, but the launch timing of this tablet is a bit weird. Immediately after about a week since its launch, MediaTek announced the new Dimensity 9400 chipset. I kinda wish that Samsung waited for a while to launch this tablet together with the new Dimensity 9400 chipset, but it is what it is. Another tablet that caught our attention though is the Xiaomi Pad 6S Pro 12.4. It is equipped with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, so it has very good performance and Xiaomi had to cut some corners to lower the price, like equipping it with an IPS LCD screen instead of an OLED screen. And after all of those tests, we have a very good idea on how this generation of chipsets perform in the real world. From what we have tested, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is definitely very high powered, but it cannot maintain its performance and just throttles very hard. The most extreme case is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, which throttled so hard that it just becomes a very bad experience. And the only phone that can tame the 8 Gen 3 is the ROG Phone 8. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 also heats up a lot unnecessarily during daily usage, so I'm just not a big fan of this generation of Snapdragon chips. The Samsung Exynos 2400 though is a great improvement over the previous generation and it sits somewhere between the 8 Gen 2 and the 8 Gen 3 in terms of efficiency and gaming performance. I'm just glad that this chip exists as competition is always better for the market. Actually for both you and for me as well because we are consumers at the end of the day and especially since Qualcomm's prices are always rising you can see from some of the launches of the new Snapdragon 8 Elite, yeah, companies have to cut some more corners just to make way for the 8 Elite. So, uh, it, it's going to be a tough year reviewing devices. Yeah. And then we have the new MediaTek Dimensity 9300 and the 9300 Plus. They are both amazing chipsets that surpass the 8 Gen 3 in terms of pure performance, though its efficiency while not gaming is slightly worse, so that will affect your battery life a little bit. And if you want a visualization of what I'm talking about, then refer to SOCPK's graph. They are the people behind Geeker1 by the way. I'm not too sure how they got all of this data, but they are pretty close to what we get from our own tests. As for laptops, we have reviewed 11 of them this year. And it's a weird year for laptops since Intel released two generations of their Intel Core Ultra mobile processors in just this 10 months. But if you want to get a new laptop right now, I suggest five of these laptops. Firstly, the Asus ZenBook S16 UM5606, the one that I have here. I absolutely love this laptop and it is equipped with the latest AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370. It has great performance and also has great battery life. 
That 16 inch OLED screen is magnificent and it also has a touch screen as well. Yet this laptop is also thin and very lightweight thanks to the seraluminum material. Yes, that will ultimately affect the price of the laptop but there is another alternative and that is going to be the ASUS VivoBook S16 M5606W. Essentially, it's a slight downgrade in all aspects. It's equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 365 chip, doesn't have a touchscreen, and it is not as thin and light as the ZenBook counterpart. Surprisingly though, this 16-inch OLED screen on the VivoBook S16 is at a higher resolution, so there you go. Moving on to Intel's side, we have the latest ASUS ZenBook S14 UX5406S. It is the 14-inch version of the fantastic ZenBook S series lineup of laptops with the same features but without a touchscreen and it is also equipped with the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V that is based on the new Luna Lake architecture. A more affordable alternative to this Zenbo S14 UX5406S is going to be the Acer Swift 14 AI with this SKU number shown on the screen here. Check out our full review down in the description below because if I want to give you a full recap then this video is gonna be longer than it already is. But um, the last laptop that I want to highlight here is the Dell XPS 13. It is a very compact form factor, looks sleek, minimalist and also very functional at the same time. However, there exists a lot of variants for the XPS 13 depending on what chip it is using. So you have the choice between, I think it is only Intel and Snapdragon chips. So do choose the Intel chip because we will now talk about the laptop chips. We have the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H in early 2024, but it's mostly an incremental upgrade, so nothing much to talk about. Then, about 10 months after that chip was announced, we now have the new Intel Core Ultra Mobile Processor Series 2, which is now based on the new Luna Lake architecture that focuses more on efficiency. It is also fabricated by TSMC and not Intel's own foundry. And the SKU that we have tested though, it is the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, as we mentioned earlier. So. You can check out the gaming test video down in the description if you want to learn more. AMD also released their new Strix Point architecture chips and we tested the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. It's an amazing chip and it is also surprising as AMD consolidated everything into just these three chips. The performance is great though the efficiency isn't as extreme as Intel's latest Lunalic chips. We did a comparison between the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 and the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. So watch that video too, because if you're looking for a laptop, then I think that video is gonna help you out a lot. And then we have one of the, I would say the biggest disappointment of the year, and that is going to be the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite. Look, the raw performance and efficiency of the Snapdragon X Elite is just really good. I mean, we've seen how great ARM chips can be compared to x86, but then the software side of things is where the excrement hits the fan. You see, the new Windows Prism translation layer, the layer that translates from x86 apps codes to ARM chip codes, it definitely is better than what we had previously, but it still takes a heavy toll on the performance, and yet it doesn't guarantee compatibility as well. If you're thinking of playing some games on a Snapdragon X Elite laptop, then I suggest you to give up because there are way too many issues and a lot of those issues are still not fixed 5 months since its release. So I'm really not gonna bother with that. And we have a few more notable tech products to highlight as well. We have this, the AGI Supreme Pro TF138 2TB microSD card. It's the world's first almost 2 TB microSD card that you can go out and buy right now though the availability is a little bit iffy and it seems to be done by batches. Ugreen also had a revolution to add robot faces on all of their products and the PB721 power bank is still the most informative and useful power bank that I've used thus far. It can display the current wattage output and the charging protocol that is being used as well. 
And let's not forget, it will also tell you the time remaining with that wattage output. So this is really informative if you are a heavy power bank user. And for earphones, I have only one to highlight, and that is going to be the Bowers & Wilkins PI8. It is a no BS type of wireless earbuds that focuses on providing the best sound quality possible, and I just love it. Plus, the way that the charging case can convert into a wireless audio transmitter is just very smart, and it works very well too. And that is the summary of all of the best tech for the year 2024. I shouldn't call it a year because it's more like this generation. Uh, yeah, the time frame of this generation is definitely shorter than a year. And I also need to thank you guys for an amazing 2024 as well. Your support really means a lot and I hope to see this community grow even further. And for all I can say right now, expect more gaming test videos and review videos before the end of 2024. So again, do subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video because 8 Elite devices are starting to pop up everywhere. Yeah, it's gonna get real busy. <laughs> ah.